There's no denying that the markets have not been doing all that well, with the FTSE 100 down by over 8% year to date, and in the US we've got the S&P 500 down by over 25% year to date. We've had issues with inflation, interest rates, energy, supply and cost, recessions, and we've had the crash of the British pound. This is all happening around us. As a wise man once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Now could be the time of opportunity and the time to get yourself some bargains. If you're not a dividend investor and you don't invest in individual stocks, then there are still plenty of opportunities and bargains out there. But in today's video, I'm going to be concentrating on five dividend stocks that may be of interest to you that are on offer right now. The first company up today is the Renewables Infrastructure Group with ticker symbol TRIG. This is a FTSE 250 company who have a portfolio of assets that basically generate energy from renewable sources. So if we take a quick look into their portfolio, you will see that they just have loads of different solar and wind farms onshore and offshore generating energy from renewable sources. So they just have loads and loads and loads. Trig have had a really turbulent time recently. And if we look at year to date, they have been down. But if you take a closer look at this, this has mainly been from the last six months, actually even the last one month. So we can see that year to date, we're down by nearly 16%. And most of this has just come from the last month where we've really seen it this, this stock plummet completely. In the last five days and the last one day, we've seen a similar picture as well. If we expand back out to five years, we can see here exactly what's happened recently in the last month. We've just absolutely plummeted. And it kind of looks like a similar um, intensity of fall that we saw from this stock in 2020, as was the case of many stocks around the world. The highest stock price that this stock has traded at this year has been around 147, was that 147? Yeah, around 147, um, that's GBX. So at the moment it's trading at 116.4 GBX. So around £1.16. This is one of my absolute favorite websites when it comes to dividend investing. It just has so much good information on. Um, but anyway, let's take a look to see what the current dividend yield of Trig actually is. So here we've got it. I remember that on the Trig website, it said that the dividend yield right now was 5.75%. Uh, so it's around 5.8% right now. Um, it's also worth noting that Trig are indeed a quarterly dividend play player, <laughs> player, <laughs> a quarterly dividend payer, which can be a real good thing for some dividend investors in terms of um, steady income flow into their portfolio. So let's now see if they've been increasing their dividends. So there's this really nice feature on Dividend Max called the annual dividend. So if we click on that, that allows us to see what's been going on with their dividend yield over time. And you can just hover over if it's um, a bit too, too small of an increase to actually see. So this shows us that since 2013, it looks like they've been gradually, yeah, gradually, gradually, very slowly increasing their dividend yield. But what we can see is between 2020 and 2021, they kept their annual dividends the same. Sorry, I meant dividends, not dividend yield just now. They kept their annual dividends the same, so they've not increased them between those years. And you can see in this graph as well, that's laid out here, which is quite nice. Yeah, so we expect that in 2021, it was a 0% increase because I've just shown you that they didn't increase their dividends at all. But in the years prior to that, small, small incremental increases. So, you know, nothing to write home about, but it's definitely a good sign, sign to see, especially if you're a dividend growth investor. And the PE ratio is just one way to get a snapshot to see whether a stock may be undervalued or overvalued but it is not the be all end all, I must say that. It's just one thing that you can look at. And of course, knowing whether a stock is undervalued or overvalued may indicate to an investor whether now is a buy opportunity for that stock or not. So if we look at the table here, it's really important that if you're looking at PE ratios, you compare the historical prices of that company's PE ratio, and you also compare the PE ratios to other competitors in the same industry. 
there is no point at looking at the PE ratio of Tesla and comparing that to, I don't know, legal in general, because they're not in the same industry and it means absolutely nothing to look at PE ratios between two industries. It's not gonna tell you much. And also you need to compare it, like I said, to the historical PE of that same company. So if we compare Trig to its historical PE ratios, we can see that they've dropped since 2020. So this could mean that if there is a fall in PE value, it may now be at a good price, a good value, a good time to buy. And if we look at one of the main competitors for Trick, this would be Green Coat UK Wind. And the PE ratio for them is around 9.3, which is lower than Trig. So you could argue that they would be a better bet for your money um, and they're at a better value right now. But you would need to do a really, really deep dive into these two companies to compare them fully and know which one that you want to add to your portfolio. Next up, we've got Persimmon, who are a company featured on the FTSE 100 and they are a house building company. So let's take a look to see how they've been performing. So if we go year to date, they are down by over 60%. And let's just take a look at the last six months down by nearly 50%. One month, a lot of that's coming from, you know, the last six months, the last one month, which is crazy. Again, let's just take a look and zoom out at the last five years. Yeah, we can see it there. It's absolutely plummeted as of recent, well, the last recent year, really. Again, it it's not been as a sharp and decline as we saw in 2020. So we can see that the stock price has absolutely fallen. It's come down from this price in May, uh, 14th of May, 2021, and it's come all the way down to its trading price today, which is, yeah, it really has fallen here. The dividend yield of Persimmon is 19.4%, which is absolutely crazy. I, I haven't really seen a dividend yield that big for a while, and to be honest, seeing that panics me a little bit like is that too big are they covering up something else here i haven't really looked into this company very much so if you guys know um, anything about persimmon and whether they are a good company to have in your dividend portfolio do let me know are they increasing their dividends let's take a look here okay no they they wouldn't really fit a dividend growth investors portfolio very much you can see that their dividends are up they're down they're not really steadily increasing them over time at all so for some investors, that may be a real consideration and they may not want to invest in this company based on that information. But we've just seen that Persimmon stock price has absolutely fallen. So if you did want to buy them, perhaps now is a good time to do that. I don't know. Um, let's have a look at the PE ratio for Persimmon. So this is the PE ratio over time and we can see that they it, it's fallen over time. It's at quite a low point right now than it has been in the last year. And if we zoom out to the last five years, Again, it's at a pretty low point. So this could indicate that now is a good time to purchase them and that they're currently undervalued. They may be a good investment to make. This of course may indicate that this is a better deal to get now for the future because it's trading at a discount currently. But like we said, we need to compare this to competitors in the industry as well. I suppose one of Persimmon's main competitors is Taylor Wimpy and their PE ratio is currently lower than that of Persimmon. So throws a bit of a, a spanner in the works, if you will. Could that mean that Taylor Wimpy is a better buy right now? Of course, sometimes it's not as straightforward as the lower the PE, the better value, the more undervalued the company is, because a higher PE ratio could mean that the company is expected to grow its revenues and earnings much more quickly in the future compared to a company with a lower PE. So actually that may mean they're a better company to go with. Like I said, PE ratio should not be the only thing you look at. The next company on this list, the next dividend stock that you may want to pick up that may be on offer right now and a good purchase is National Grid, which is of course a massive, massive company, an electricity and gas supplier and distributor. So let's have a look at what they're doing. Over the year to date, they are down by nearly 20%. In the past six months, nearly 27%. In the last one month, nearly 20%, and we can just see a similar picture here. I mean, yeah, you're gonna expect them to go down at the moment. And let's zoom right out to the max. And we can see that we have had quite a sharp decline, really, compared to a lot of these tiny little fluctuations that we see. This one is quite a significant um, decrease. I would expect, and I think many people would expect, that 
you know, this will go up again, like many of these companies. If it's a good company, it will go up um, after times of crashes, but it depends. Do you wanna add this company to your portfolio? I personally have this in my dividend portfolio and I have Trig as well, and I think that's the only one on this list. But if you're looking for this stock, now may be the time to buy it. Another thing to point out about National Grid actually is they haven't really done anything over the last five years. You can see here that over the last five years, it's just down by 6%. That's They've remained pretty steady, to be honest, pretty stagnant. Um, but if you zoom out, you've seen that during some period of time, they've seen massive, massive growth. National Grid's dividend yield comes in at 5.8%, which is a pretty good dividend yield, really, for a company like that. And their dividends have generally been increasing over time. They are one of the trustworthy dividend payers here in the UK, I would say. And yeah, you can see that they, they have decrease them some years but all in all you would see a, an increase over time in their dividends for national grid national grid's pe ratio is currently sitting at 11.8 and if we zoom out to the last five years we can see that it has gone down but it's not at its lowest it's ever been and let's just compare this to perhaps one of their main competitors. Let's look at SSE quickly. So SSE's PE ratio right now is a lot lower than that of National Grid. The next one on this list, which is a firm favorite of many UK dividend stock investors, and that is Legal & General, which is a provider of insurance and investment products. Year to date, they are down by 32%. Has that came come from, yeah. So a lot of that is from the last one month, the last six months. Let's just take a look, zoom right out. Yeah, they've not done well in the last five years. Wow, I didn't realize this. Down by 23% over the last five years. And we can see that it's looking no different. They are, they are just, they just keep going down. Max it out. Okay, the max, the max out graph always looks a lot better, doesn't it? So now could be the time to add this one to your portfolio. Legal and General's dividend yield right now is a 9.1%, which is crazy. I actually didn't know it was that high. This is not a stock that I have in my portfolio, so I'm not too familiar. But yeah, it looks pretty good. The dividends are increasing over time. We saw a little dip in 2020, as we would expect but pretty much they seem to have gone up every year since about 2011. Legal and General's PE ratio right now comes in at 5.3 um, as of today's date. And they have, I believe, yeah, so they've been pretty steady with their PE ratio. I wouldn't say that this is a really low point for them, but it is definitely lower than the last, well, since since this point, really. It's um it's decreased here. And if we look at one of their perhaps main competitors, which would be Aviva, they have a PE ratio that is very, very similar. But like I said, PE ratio should not be the only thing. Have a further dive into their financials, look at their moats, their competitive moats, look to see at their earnings per share in more detail and so on. And the final one on our list, which is again, a stock that is in most UK dividend investors portfolio. It's not actually in mine. Um, I have Unilever but GSK. Of course, GSK is a global biofarm company, absolutely massive company, producing a lot of products that you will know. Year to date, they are down by nearly 32%. Six months, oh wow, that's really all coming in the six months, isn't it? And then, okay, yeah. They're not doing too well recently. You can see here that they've a massive decline, really big decline here. And if we zoom out here, we can see that they are they have really dropped recently. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm recording my screen, but I, that could be quite small for you. I'll try and zoom in. Recently, they've just been plummeting right down. But you've got to think, do you think this company is going to go on and do well in the future? Because this may mean that if you do, now is a great time to buy because you're getting them at a discount. You're getting a really high quality stock with a lot of value at a lot lower price than you normally would. Think that if you bought the stock here when it was dropping, and then you you held it and you maybe sold it up here. You would have made a great profit, but of course, that is sort of time in the market a little bit. Ideally, if you're an, a long-term investor, you would just buy a good quality value stock and you would just hold it for the long run. The PE ratio for GSK is currently at 10.13. And actually, if you zoom out to the last five years of PE ratios for GSK, they've had some much higher PE ratios for sure, but I wouldn't say that this is a massive, massive fall. It is probably the lowest in the last five years. Yeah. So it could be a really good time to buy. 
Um, in 2020, the PE ratio was around 15, now it's around 10. And I suppose one of GSK's main competitors would be Pfizer, and Pfizer's PE ratio comes in lower than that of GSK at 8.2. GSK are a quarterly dividend payer, so they will pay you four times a year, and their dividend yield is a pretty respectable 4.6%. And interestingly, GSK haven't really increased their dividends since 2014, so they've just remained the same. They're at, they're at a decent amount, but they haven't really increased them for a while. So there we have it. Those were five dividend pay in stocks that you may want to consider adding to your portfolio. If you've got any opinions or you know anything more about these stocks that you want to leave in the comments below, please do. And if you own any of these stocks, do also let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon.